Hi, my name is John Jakewish. I am a doctor of biomedical engineering. I am going to talk today about building muscle with bad genetics. I have horrible genetics. I'm going to explain to you why I know that and how you can figure out what your genetics are like with the help of a few examples. I'm going to go through the story of my fitness journey. I'm going to talk about all the things that worked and all the things that massively wasted my time so that you don't have to waste any time and you can learn from my adventure. I want to really emphasize that what I'm going to be talking about probably applies to you because somewhere between 90 and 99% of the population, I estimate, uh, the 90 is based off of a, a study that lifehack.com did showing that 90% of people quit within 90 days of starting their fitness program. Uh, and they're not quitting because they got great results. They're quitting because they got no results. So I want to talk about how I'm one of the guys who would always get absolutely zero results with standard weightlifting and what I did to address it. And also the opposing viewpoints when looking at genetic outliers. And I'm, I'm going to explain why you really shouldn't be looking at the professional bodybuilder for motivation because you probably have absolutely nothing in common with that individual. Let me get started. When I was in high school, like every other high school guy, I was looking at pictures of Arnold and uh, Dorian Yates was popular at the time. Everybody wanted to be like Dorian. Everyone wanted to do the Dorian Yates workout. As soon as I got my learner's permit, when you're 15 and a half, you're allowed to drive during daylight hours by yourself or with, uh, with an adult in the car. I basically got my driver's license so I could go to the gym. All I wanted to do was have a gym membership and I, mm, I wanted to be jacked. That's, that is where my head was. That's what I cared about. Uh, my friends, they're all the same. We were all going to meet up at the gym every day and started going. And I, I very quickly realized that nothing was happening, despite the fact that I was getting a whole lot of protein. I was doing all the movements that all my favorite athletes were doing, according to Flex Magazine, which at the time was an abomination of literature. And I don't even know if it exists anymore. I think it's just online now. But they've sort of been forced to be more real because the internet has been more real. And by real, I mean, the athletes are talking about their genetic differences, which is a good thing. And they are talking about the performance enhancing drug use that is very prevalent in bodybuilding. That's not a shock to anybody. So when I was getting started, it was just very apparent. I saw a couple of guys who adapted very quickly, built a ton of muscle. But this was rare because the rest of my friends were like me. They would be in there all the time and absolutely nothing would change. And that was just generally frustrating for me. And I realized looking at some of the other guys, there was a guy I went to high school with, his name was Mark. He put on 30 pounds over a summer. Like I think it was sophomore year, he started varsity for the, the football team. And it was just kind of amazing. This guy looked like he was 25 years old. Uh, and even though you know, he was just a, just a sophomore in high school and it was because he put on so much muscle. And I'd asked him, like, what are you doing differently than me? He says, I don't know. Like, I smoke cigarettes. Like, and, and I'm thinking, well, that, that's not, that didn't make the difference. You know, so it's like, we couldn't figure out what it was. We were eating the same thing. We were lifting the same way. And he was growing like crazy and absolutely nothing happened to me. So uh, fast forward a few years, I, I went to university, went out for the rugby team. Now, I had put on a little bit of muscle, probably just because of puberty. Uh, and I was about 160. It was a lean 160. And I became an outside center for the Sacramento State rugby team. That's where I went to undergrad. It is the number one university on Highway 50. Very prestigious. So I uh, enjoyed the hell out of playing rugby. And I, I really wanted to pick a sport where I could work with great strength and conditioning coaches and I could figure out why I wasn't gifted in the putting on muscle department and how I could address it. I got zero answers. It was unbelievable. All the strength and conditioning coaches that I talked to 
we're just sort of like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're normal. Most people just, you know, you're strong. Like, and I, I was stronger than a lot of the people that were my contemporaries that want, wanted my position that were trying out for the team. But it was like, yeah, okay, but I want an additional maybe 20 pounds of muscle or something like that still wasn't happening. And these strength and conditioning coaches were giving me zero answers. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to enjoy playing rugby and try and understand what I'm missing out on. Coincidentally, at the same time, I ran into quite a few people who, you know, I, I run into them in the, in the powerlifting gym at Sacramento State. And they were, a lot of these guys were working as personal trainers. And I noticed that when they got clients, the number one thing they would do is get their clients lean. Like they really, they would tell them about all the muscle they would gain, but they would put them on a nutrition program that, you know, standard kind of calorie deficit, the high protein sort of thing. And, and I realized, okay, these guys actually aren't putting a lot of muscle on their clients. They're just getting them to be leaner so they look good. As I started asking questions, they would say things to me like, yeah, not everybody gains a lot of muscle, but everybody can be lean. So I thought, oh, okay, that makes sense from a business model standpoint of a personal trainer. But that's really kind of a bummer for those of us who are trying to figure out why we can't build muscle. So I, I kind of gave up on the idea or just continued doing regular lifting with kind of zero results uh, and just focused on being as lean and as fast as I could be. I was fortunately, I was pretty fast because to be an outside center, it's kind of like a wide receiver type position in rugby. I was good at that. And years went on, I ended up graduating and uh, worked in software I uh, worked for a uh, Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area software company. Then I ended up starting a medical device company because my mother was diagnosed with osteoporosis. And this was a very key time for my thinking when it came to the physicality of engaging muscle, stimulating muscle to grow, and what are the differences between different human beings? Why do we have different genetic potentials? I think most people thought that the differences have to do with how much of a anabolic hormone level does somebody have versus another. Like that, that must be the big genetic difference because we see what happens with people who use performance enhancing drugs and how it seems like overnight they can, they can become sensational, which by the way, is not true either. But I didn't know that. And most people are very confused on that subject. So I marched forward looking at bone density to treat my mother's osteoporosis. And what I determined in developing the OsteoStrong system, what ultimately became the OsteoStrong system, which now has 300 locations in 15 different countries to treat osteoporosis, is we isolate the strongest range of motion. So just as an example, in the upper extremities. So I'm going to have the back of the hand in line with the clavicle, 120 degree angle, from upper to lower arm. So I can either produce or absorb the greatest amount of force in this position. So by isolating this position and allowing people to just exercise right here, so very short range of motion, in order to compress this kinetic chain, so I'm compressing the clavicle, I'm compressing the humerus, the radius and ulna, so all these bones are compressed on their axis. So axial loading, very important for bone mass in I saw athletic people with their upper extremities creating 2,000 pounds of force. Now, they can't bench press 2,000 pounds. That would be ludicrous. But in that very isolated position right here, incredible forces. And we saw that echoed all throughout the body. And I realized that we have incredible capacity to create force or absorb force in very specific positions. And I thought, wow, like, that's really a different type of exhaustion. Maybe if I focused on that, instead of doing regular weight training, I could stimulate something, some kind of growth. So I thought, okay, let me do a literature review and see if anybody has looked at different loading, like high loading where you're stronger and maybe low loading where 
you're less strong. Sort of like accommodating the movement so that you can engage more musculature and you can go to a deeper level of fatigue. I, I just thought like, you know, maybe something like that exists. Turns out it absolutely existed. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm gonna put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're gonna help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.